This morning we continue a series entitled, God is Enough. It's a study through Psalm chapter 23. And today we come to Psalm 23 and verse 4. Psalm 23 and verse 4. We talked about how God is enough to meet my needs. God is enough to give me rest. God is enough to guide my steps. Today, from the fourth verse in Psalm 23, God is enough to calm my fears. God is enough to calm my fears. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll look at uh, the last two verses. God is enough to heal my hurt, and God is enough to secure my future. When you think of Psalm 23, when this series is over, years from now, my hope is when you think of Psalm 23, when you hear it read, when you experience it in your life, you will remember the reality that God is enough. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you encounter, that God is is enough. Today from Psalm 23 and verse 4, God is enough to calm my fears. God is enough to calm my fears. Begin reading with me, Psalm 23 and verse 4. David writes, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is enough to calm my fears. Now let's back up to verse 1 and we'll read to verse 6 again. I want you to get the context of what's happening here. Let's back up to verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Even though, or He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Remember, the word of God is perfect, has the power to change our lives. God is enough. David talks about a shepherd who's leading the sheep. But it's a picture how God leads his people. This good shepherd will guide us in the paths of righteousness. But let's be honest. The paths of righteousness are not always the easiest paths. The paths of righteousness are not always the most well-trodden paths. The paths of righteousness often are winding, difficult, troubling roads. Remember, Jesus promised us, in this world you will have trouble. Say that word, trouble. In this word, world, you will have trouble. Anybody ever had any trouble? Anybody ever been in trouble? Yes. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. The, the, the path to peace, the path to peace of God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God. Listen, the path to the goodness of God always leads you through a valley. Mark it down. The path to peace with God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, the goodness of God always leads you through the valleys of life. Count on it. If we're in this sin-cursed world, we don't get out with a perfect life. We encounter difficulties, struggles, and trials as well. God is enough to calm my fears. I heard about a five-year-old little boy named Johnny. He was in the kitchen and he was helping his mom cook. His mom said, Johnny, I need a can of soup. I want you to go to the pantry, and I want you to get me a can of soup. And Johnny said, Mom, I don't want to go to the pantry. It's dark in there. I'm scared. She said, Sweetheart, don't worry about it. Just open the door, go in there, grab soup, come right back. He said, Mama, I don't want to do it. She continued to tell him to go. He persisted, I don't want to go. Finally, the mom said, Johnny, listen, there's nothing to be afraid of. Jesus will be with you. Go get me a can of soup. So Johnny reluctantly walks to the pantry twists the knob on the door, kind of cracks the door a little bit. He can see it's so dark in the pantry. He opens that door a little wider, so dark in the pantry. He's about to go back to his mom and say, Mom, I can't get you that soup because it's dark in the pantry. And then he had an idea. He said, Mama said Jesus would be with me. So he looked into the pantry and he said, Hey, Jesus, if you're in there, hand me that can of tomato soup. <laughs> I want you to know, no matter what you face in life, if you're a child of God, you don't face anything alone. Even the valley of the shadow of death. Hey, here he talks about how fears 
can, can surround us and control our lives. But he reminds us of the sufficiency of the shepherd that God is enough. What do you fear? Now think about it for a moment. What do you fear? Some of us face legitimate fears of, of, of facing death. Legitimate fears of, of sickness, disease, of relationships breaking apart, of, of money running out, of loved ones who leave us. These are all legitimate fears. But here in this passage, Psalm 23, verse 4, David addresses multiple fears. Look, he talks about the fear of death, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He talks about heartache and trouble and pain, the evil that we experience in this world. He talks about loneliness. He talks about being alone. He talks about facing dangers and difficulties. David is addressing all the fears that you and I encounter in this life. Legitimate, real fears. And what he says, now this is powerful, what he says in the midst of verse 4 is in spite of all of this, I will fear no evil. You see that? In spite of death, Trouble, danger, despair, darkness, shadows. I will fear no evil. Why? Because he knows that God is enough to calm his fears. There can be peace and hope in the valleys of life. God is enough. Even if you're in the midst of a valley today, I want you to remember and I want you to know God is enough. There's not a valley you face where he's not with you. And he can't guide you. Let's dive in and look at what we learn here. God is enough to calm my fears. Right here in Psalm 23 and verse 4. First of all, how are we calmed? How are our fears alleviated and eliminated? First of all, his promises calm my fears. His promises calm my fears. Now, many of you know that if you've heard of Psalm 23, especially in verse 4, This verse is used to comfort people in times of death. Whether they know they're facing death or whether you've lost a loved one, this verse is a comfort to those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. While that is certainly an appropriate application of Psalm 23.4, the larger meaning is this. David wants us to recognize and realize that no matter what you walk through, a valley of the shadow of death, any circumstance or situation, no matter what you walk through, that God is with you. Now, Tim or Philip Keller wrote that book. I told you about the book, A Shepherd Looks at the 23rd Psalm. And Keller reminds us of something very important and, 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 and specific here regarding sheep. He says that, that David is referring to a seasonal passage where a shepherd would lead the sheep. This is a seasonal change from the lowlands where the sheep would spend the winter to the highland pastures where the sheep would spend the summer. Now the valleys that they pass through are places of rich pasture and much water, a great place for sheep to grow right there in the valley. But they're also places of much danger. Wild animals lurk in the crevices of the canyons in the valley. Sudden storms may sweep along the valley floor. Floods may come. Since the sun doesn't shine, there's shadows everywhere in the valley. Shadows which at any moment could become the shadow of death. It's important to note that the valley of the shadow of death, listen to Christian, the valley of the shadow of death is just as much God's will for us as is the green pastures and the still waters. God takes us as the shepherd leads us and guides us in every circumstance And in every situation, the Christian life is not always peaceful, not always tranquil, nor will we always stay on the mountaintop experiencing God's presence as never before. In fact, most of your Christian life will be lived in the valley, not on top of the mountain. That's where the most, the best vegetation is. That's where the most growth occurs, right there in the valley. And we must be willing to walk through the valley as the shepherd guides us. And notice David doesn't say, look, look, now this is important. David doesn't say, if I walk through the valley. What does he say? Even though I walk through the valley. This is not a possibility. It is a reality. Not when I walk through the valley, but right now David is in the midst of the valley. Even though I am walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to fear. 
Look at what it says again. Now, this is important. Read verse 4 with me again. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, I want you to notice right there at the beginning, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that phrase, before this ominous description of the valley, the valley of the shadow of death, there's an important word you need to circle, underline, highlight, and star. Even though I walk, look at this now, through the valley of the shadow of death. Do you see that word? Even though I walk through the valley. Christian, listen to me carefully. God brings you to the valley. There's no doubt about that. But he brings you to it to take you through it. He brings you to the valley But he brings you to it in order to take you through it. And here he says something so important. Even if this is the valley of the shadow of death, we walk through this valley. Listen carefully. Death is a doorway, not a destination. The troubles and trials that we face in life, God brings us to them to take us through them. And we have a testimony and a promise and a word that God is good, not just on the mountains, but even in the midst of the darkest valleys of life. Have you experienced God's presence in the midst of the valley? Here he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And notice what else he says, even though, here it is, even though I walk. As you walk through the difficulties and pains of life, David doesn't say, even though I run through the valley in panic, or I stumble through the valley in confusion, or I'm worked up into a frenzy in the midst of this valley of life. No, he is calm because he trusts his faithful shepherd, even though I walk through the valley. Boy, we could learn a lesson, right? Because most of the time when bad stuff happens, we begin to cry and complain and fuss, throw a little pity party. God, why me? I don't understand. I don't know. We get stressed out and freaked out and don't know what to do. Trust the shepherd. He guides you to it and can take you through it no matter what you face in life. There's an Indian fable that talks about a mouse who constantly lived in fear of a cat. So a magician came and he turned the mouse into a cat. But then as a cat, he was always afraid of a dog. So the magician came and turned the dog into a tiger. But then as a tiger, he was always afraid of a hunter. So the magician came back and turned him into a mouse again. This is what he said, be a mouse again. You only have the heart of a mouse and I cannot help you. What about when we face the valleys of this life, without relying on the shepherd's guidance. We constantly live in fear. We constantly live in doubt. We constantly live with worry. God has given us a promise. You know the promise here is God will see you through the valley, even if it is the valley of death. Death is a doorway, not a destination for the believer in Jesus Christ. Death is entrance into the presence of God himself promises of God. What does the Bible tell us in Psalm 56.3? This is in your Bible reading plan just yesterday. Psalm 56.3, what does it say? When I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in God. God is enough to calm my fears. Number two, his presence calms my fears. So we see his promises calm my fears. His presence calms my fears. Notice what the psalmist says here. You are with me. Now David makes this declaration that there's pain and heartache and difficulty, death and evil and trouble all around him. But he says here in the midst of this verse, I will fear no evil. But why does he say that? He says, even if I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to fear. Why? Look at what he says next. For you, because you are with me. Why does he not fear in the midst of the valley? How can he have confidence and trust in the midst of difficulties? Because God's presence is with him. Notice something very interesting. The first three verses. Let's let's look back at these first three verses that we've seen so far. The first three verses, look at what he says. He talks about the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. 
He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness. You see that, right? He's talking about God in the first three verses. You see this? But then, in verse 4, he no longer talks about God. He talks to God. Look at what it says in verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for He doesn't say he is with me. He says, for you are with me. Now, he's not talking about God. He's talking directly to God. He says, God, I know that even in the midst of this difficulty, you are right here beside me. Listen, it is the valley where theory becomes truth. It is the valley where God's presence becomes a reality. God reveals his presence in the valley like you've never experienced it before. You realize he's a shepherd who is close and near. In the dark valleys of life, this shepherd is not just in front of you guiding. He is right beside you, loving and caring and leading. Sheep lack any really good vision. They have no vision at all. They're frightened very easily in new circumstances, especially when it's dark. You know what keeps them calm in the dark valleys? The presence of the shepherd as he leads. What's the answer to the fear that we face in life? David says, I will not fear. I will fear no evil. You want to know what the answer to fear is? The presence of the shepherd. God's presence makes all the difference. God's presence makes all the difference. We are never so conscious of the presence of God as when we pass through the valleys of life. How many parents do we have in the room? Let me me see. Hold your hand up real high. How many parents? Great. Some of you are like this. I don't know if it's because you're you're a little too Baptist or you're ashamed of your kids. I'm not sure. Lots of of parents in the room. You ever ever been asleep at night and a thunderstorm comes and you hear your kid in the other room wake up? Jake was probably a year and a half old. When he woke up in his crib one night and said, boom, boom, mommy, boom, boom. All he knew was that thunder and that lightning scared him. Regularly at our home, there's someone that has a bad dream. Someone that's afraid of something. And it's interesting, sometimes they just want to crawl in bed with mom and dad. Or they want you to hold them, they want you to rock them back to sleep, the little ones. Or or they just want to be near you. And it's interesting, especially in the midst of a thunderstorm. It's not like mom or dad can make the storm go away, right? It's not like I can pick the kid up and say, everything's going to be all right. Cease, be still, and it all stops. Hey, I'm a pastor. I'm not Jesus, right? We can't do that. We can't make it go away. But that child, once the parent has that child, their fear is gone. And it's not because the parent makes the circumstances disappear. It's because the child child needs the presence of their mom or dad. In fearful situations, everything changes when they're near. And the same is true in our relationship with God. God does not. He can, but he doesn't always make the valleys disappear in a moment. Sometimes he calms the storm. Sometimes he calms his child. And we need to be in a position in the midst of the circumstances and difficulties of this life to draw near to him, to cry out to him and say, God, I need you. And to know that even if the storm stays, my fears are calmed because God is there. What does the Bible tell us in Isaiah 41 and verse 10? Listen to this. God says, fear not for I'm with you. Be not dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God says, I'm with you. No matter what you face The good shepherd is always with you. Listen, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, no matter the struggles, no matter the pain or heartache, guess what? God never leaves your side. He leads you through the valleys. His promises calm my fears. His presence calms my fears. And finally, His peace. His peace calms my fears. Look at what it says here, the very last phrase in verse 4. They comfort me. Can you imagine being comfortable even in the midst of fear, difficulty, and darkness? 
even in the midst of the shadows of this life. David describes the peace that you can experience in the valley. This peace of God. He says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. This means you can have peace in the midst of fear. You can have hope in the midst of danger. You can have a promise in the midst of difficulty. That's what our good shepherd offers, comfort. Through life, as we follow the shepherd, we always have different types of experiences. Your experiences are different than mine. Mine are different than someone else's. Everyone faces different circumstances. But if you know the Lord, the reality is this principle stays true no matter what circumstance you face. The closer we are to the shepherd, the safer we are, and the more his peace fills our hearts. No matter what we walk through. David says the rod and staff bring comfort. You are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. Why? Because David knows the lengths to which a shepherd will go. To protect his sheep. You remember this is David, right? This is David who killed a, a lion and a bear protecting his sheep. Who killed Goliath with, with a, one little stone and a sling. This is David. He, he knows what a shepherd does. He says the rod and staff of God comfort him. The rod and staff. This is an interesting interesting analogy. These are basic tools of shepherds in the land of Palestine. First of all, I want to give you three purposes of the rod and staff. First of all, a purpose is protection. Protection. The rod is used for protection. Uh, uh, even a young shepherd boy. Each shepherd boy that begins to help his father with a flock goes and picks out a rod by himself. He picks out a sapling, cuts off the sapling, digs it up, and rounds the roots off. Now, it has to be a, a hard tree, rounds those roots off, and then makes that sapling fit his hand. And, and this rod becomes almost an extension of his hand. So the rod is shorter. It has a a bulge on the end of it where the root ball had been that he's smoothed off. It's hardened wood and he makes it where it fits his hand perfectly. And this rod is like an extension of his right arm. And a good shepherd in the land of Palestine can use a rod. And he he can kill a predator by throwing the rod from 50 yards away. Amazing. Some of you think you're great with your rifle or your shotgun. Try that one time. Go cut you off a branch and throw it at the deer and see what happens. He he uses this rod and it's almost never out of his hands. It speaks of his authority. It speaks of his power. It speaks of protection. Not only that, though, the rod speaks of correction. It's interesting. the, The shepherd uses the rod one way against predators. But he uses the rod in another way against his own sheep. Often the sheep will get out of line. The shepherd's all the way on the other side. And what does he do? He can throw the rod in a different way, whereas not to to harm the sheep, but to correct the sheep and to get it back in the right spot. If the shepherd sees the sheep wandering away from its own or approaching poisonous weeds or, or getting out of line or getting close to danger, that club will go whistling through the air and the sheep looks back and then gets right back where he ought to be. Protection and correction. But then... The rod and staff speak of direction. Direction. The staff specifically. Where the the rod speaks of authority and power. The rod speaks of discipline and correction. The staff. The staff speaks of direction. The staff is normally long, slender. This is what you normally see shepherds with. Holding the staff with a crook at the top. And he says the rod and the staff, they comfort me. The staff speaks of love and care. Uh, Philip Keller, the shepherd and pastor, says, being stubborn creatures, sheep often get in the most difficult and ridiculous, preposterous dilemmas. He said, I've seen my own sheep greedy for one more mouthful of green grass, climb down steep cliffs where they slipped and fell into the sea. Only my long shepherd staff could lift them out of the water and back on solid ground. Another common occurrence was to find sheep get stuck, in, stuck fast in labyrinths of wild roses and brambles where they pushed in to find new mouthfuls of green grass. Soon the thorns were hooked into their wool and they could not possibly pull free no matter how much they tried. Only the use of the staff could free them from the entanglement. Do you see how our shepherd leads us and guides us with his rod and his staff? The rod to protect us, to correct us. The staff to direct us. 
where we ought to go. We serve a good shepherd who leads us and guides us. Shadows always appear larger than life, don't they? Shadows always appear larger than life. Just the other day, we were walking around the circle near our home. And we were, uh, it's probably about the time the sun was setting. And we were walking with the sun to our backs. I was pushing a stroller with Caroline in it. Sadie was standing next to me walking. Stephanie and the older kids had already run on because they like to run. And I think it's of the devil. So they ran on. And here the sun's to our backs, the sun begins to set, and I'm pushing the stroller. And Sadie looks out in front of us and says, Dad, look how big we are. Isn't that amazing? Because here we stood, but the shadow extended 30 or 40 feet in front of us. She would walk a little ways ahead of me and say, Now I'm taller than you. And she'd come back and she'd try to, you know, do something with her hand and her shadow to make it look like she was pulling my hair or if I had any hair or look like she was punching me in the face. She was doing all kinds of stuff with her shadows. Shadows are interesting because shadows make things look bigger, don't they? Shadows appear larger than life. There's things in life that can seem threatening. The Bible describes them as shadows. Now think about it. What is a shadow? A shadow often appears larger than life, bigger than it really is. It really, honestly, isn't very rational that we're afraid of the dark or shadows. It's not a very rational fear. I'm not saying if you experience that, you should be ashamed. I'm just saying the dark shadows, they can't hurt us. And in reality, there would be no shadows if there wasn't light. The only reason there are shadows in this life is because there's light. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. So whenever we find ourselves in the valley of the shadow and those shadows stretch out before us and look so big and so daunting, we ought to turn around, not facing the shadows, but look toward the light. Realize that is where our hope is. That's where our sufficiency is. As the hymn says, turn your eyes on Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Shadows appear a lot bigger than they are. Donald Gray Barnhouse, wonderful pastor and teacher in the first half of the 20th century, probably one of America's leading Bible teachers, lost his first wife to cancer. He was heartbroken and devastated. He was left with three children under the age of 12, traveling to their funeral, being driven in the family car. His little daughter, the oldest, was just looking out the window, heartbroken, solemn, and sad. At that moment, a large truck drove by the limousine and cast an overbearing shadow on the entire car. At that moment, Barnhouse looked at his oldest daughter and said, Tell me, sweetheart, would you rather be run over by a truck or would you rather be run over by its shadow? She looked at him puzzling for a moment and said, I guess the shadow because that wouldn't hurt at all. And looking at every one of his children, this is what he said. Your mother has not been overridden by death, only by the shadow of death. There is nothing to fear. Nothing. Friends, listen. If we have a promise, even in the valley of the shadow of death, there is nothing we face in this life that our shepherd cannot handle. There's no situation that you face where he leaves you in fear. There's no situation you face that he's not right there beside you. And we have a promise as believers in Jesus Christ, even one day, When we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we are walking through the doorway to our final destination, heaven. God is enough. God is enough. No matter what we face in this life, he is with us. I'm going to 